Okay, so it's the next day and I've just finished work and it's time for the exciting part of the video, the mini book haul. So, I mean, first purchase is the tote bag from Daunt's Books. So that was the first bookshop I went to in Marlinburn, that beautiful one where it has like the balcony bit and the downstairs bit of all like the translated fiction and all around the world books and travel guides and just, oh, so beautiful. Like you have to check it out if you, if you live in London, if you come and visit London, like, oh. But I had, I had, I bought three books and all of them these are new two of them are translated fiction and one of them is a memoir and i'm so excited so i'll start off with the memoir first so first we have crying in h mart by michelle zorna so from what i've heard about it it's a really of course heartbreaking memoir because it's following michelle who is a member of this like indie cult band called Japanese Breakfast and she's dealing with the loss of her mother and she's going through that sorrow that grief and a big part of her relationship with her mother and a way for her to connect with her mother even after she's gone is through food so which is why it's crying in H Mart, which I think is such a just poignant 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 title and oh, the cover as well and from what I understand, even though it is heartbreaking, it's also really funny that although it's tackling grief and loss, there's this lightness of touch with Michelle's writing. So yes, she may be an artist, a music artist, but also she's becoming a rising literary star and we love to see it. So it's meant to be a beautiful coming of age story about the relationships between a mother and a daughter, about grief, about loss, about food and eating and that communal aspect when it comes to food and the love that it can display it can be i think food is a love language you could disagree but i think food is a love language and i think that's going to be displayed and explored beautifully in this memoir and i'm just so excited i'm i'm hopeful this could be maybe not an all-time favorite but a favorite of 2022 so we shall see and then next we have translated fiction and i haven't had a bad experience with translated fiction so far this year and i love love south american latin american translated fiction especially and here we have here we have Brickmakers, which is written by Selva Almada and is translated from the Spanish into English by Annie McDermott. And Selva Almada is an Argentinian writer. And from what I understand, this is quite a harrowing and deep dive into masculinity, especially toxic masculinity. So at the beginning of the book, you essentially start at the end because you have these two men who are both dying they both killed each other they were in a fight and we're seeing as they take their last breaths and they're now reflecting on their lives on intergenerational trauma that was passed down from their fathers into masculinity toxic masculinity into just how they literally got to this point where they're both on the floor about to die and the fact that they've also you know killed the other and what kind of relationship they've had growing up and their fathers have had growing up and it's just a deep dive into that political landscape of Argentina and I'm so so excited to dive in explore this and I just think mm, it's gonna be great and here we've got another piece of translated fiction and it's also a short story collection which again I've been enjoying this year Things Remembered and Things Forgotten by Kyoko Nakajima and it's co-translated by you give me a second. Ian McCullough McDonald and Ginny Tapley Takamori from the Japanese into English. And it's a collection of 10 short stories. And from what I understand, it's very political. It's about war, history, just people and their lives, love, I'm assuming loss if there's a war and all that, you know, interweaved into these stories. And it's just meant to be a really compelling portrait of contemporary Japan whilst bringing in the traditional, the old, the rural, the urban, the new, the now and I'm really excited to see how it's all going to come together and intersect and just even like the cover and the way it's blurred it just provides this really sort of 
like there's this touch maybe of magical realism but I know it's not that exact vibe so I'm very excited to dive into this too and I'm excited in a future video to let you know if this book shopping trip was a success with these books that I bought. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a much more chilled out aesthetic vibe that I usually go for. And I hope for those of you who have had a chance to come to London, it gives you a little, a little taste of what London is like. Although it's not always sunny like that let me not even pretend or lie when the sun shines it just adds this touch of magic to london but if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you want to join this small chaotic corner of the internet then subscribe join the fam and i'll see you in my next video bye